Hi, this is Edip, and uh, I have John Ryder with me. He is a professor of philosophy. And October 28, 2020, in the past we had uh, some discussion on philosophical issues. If you type my name and John Ryder, uh, you will uh, find the others. Now, today we had some walk and also we sat down in front of our home, we discussed some issues. What we discussed? We discussed several issues. We discussed yeah. what is uh, well, your mistaken brain. idea about brains. Yeah. You yeah. <laughs> <laughs> think so. Yeah. Uh, he has a weird idea about uh, what is uh, who we are. Right. Yeah, he thinks that uh, we are not only brain, we are br brain plus something. We're people. Yeah, people. <laughs> we'll discuss that. It is, uh, it is very interesting about mind-body duality. Mm -hmm. And um, the other is, uh, we, what else we discussed? With the, uh, well, more recently, just now, this question of uh, freedom of speech. Ah, yeah, it came to uh, about uh, the, right now, the French, uh, the French teacher, what happened? Can you summarize, please, what we discussed now? Well, I, I'm, I, well I, I don't know about the French case all in much detail, though there, as you were pointing out, there's uh, <clears throat> just recently a French teacher was giving some lesson and he used examples of uh, criticisms or insults or uh, unflattering depictions of the Prophet and so some... Prophet Muhammad. Muhammad and some, uh, some uh, student or... wasn't even a student of his, I don't no, think. No, not right? student. So, so, or somebody... well, there's some Chechen boy got yeah. wind of this and took exception to it and so killed wow. the, uh, wow. the teacher. Wow, the right. slaughter. Yes, and so the French, of course, are outraged by this and uh, since freedom of speech is and, and separation of, and secularity is so much a part of French, you know, the laïcité, so much a part of French culture that um, they've been pushing back and uh, President Macron has pushed back very hard. But you were saying that the, that in Turkey there's a there's now a kind of... There is a major reaction. Turkish right, people, especially yeah. Tayyip Erdogan wants to distract people from the economy because right. he's corrupt, a big thief in chief and... Uh, uh, Erdogan. Yeah, Erdogan. Yeah, Erdogan. It's it's incredible. Story, right? He and his family and his right, cronies right, right. Right. They keep stealing, they never cease, they have great appetite in stealing the resources. And therefore the country is in shamble, but they distract through this uh, bravado and right. challenging the foreigners and stuff. Right, right, right. And right now Erdogan is um, uh, threatening French with um, kind of, uh, what is yeah, it? Boycott. 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 Right. 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 Yeah, on that one uh, we are on the same. Uh, right. line that freedom of expression should not have any limitations and uh, what uh, they do object in this one contradiction first of all the depiction of Muhammad really it is um, almost um, all based on their holy books hadith uh, and sunnah fabricated lies attributed to Muhammad and uh, therefore, they should look at the mirror if they are getting angry with that. Well, it is in your holy hadith books. And second, uh, I said uh, they don't follow their own book, the Quran, chapter 4, verse 140. It tells uh, believers, well, do you, I, I, I hesitate to use the word believer. The Quran uses the word who trusts God based on evidence. Anyway, uh, those who faith faith no I, I don't think good either. Faith. Ah, okay. uh, the word faith uh, is uh, really criticizing the Quran uh, the uh -huh. word faith what implies or right. it implies that without reason without, just right. without evidence well, without belief evidence. without evidence yeah. and the Quran rejects any fall without evidence okay. says you must have evidence and uh, proof right. and anyway uh, therefore, uh, they says uh, when you, you, those who acknowledge the truth, when you are in, with the people uh, who do make mockery of your system, your belief, and uh, they insult, uh, leave their presence, and then later go back until they stop making mockery and insult and uh, leave them. And in some other verses, say peace. If they insult you, 
they harass you, just say peace, don't engage with them. That's it. And this is, a, they basically, by getting very angry, they're trying to kind of kill them and boycott and that kind of thing is really is not, just passively leave them. Do not support, of course. Um, and they are not reacting according to their own holy book. And the, the other thing is uh, they give uh, uh, others to provoke them pretty much power. They say, here it is, a button over there. The moment you do a cartoon or you have insult to our poor prophet, which they really worship Muhammad, like Christians uh, worship Jesus. And uh, the moment you do that, we all, millions of us, will go crazy, we'll jump around, we'll leave everything, we'll get uh, yeah. upset with that. It gives the other way too much power. Exactly. Yes. It is easy. How, many, right. how much calorie one person can right. uh, spend <laughs> to just do a cartoon right. and stuff. But millions of people will jump, jump up and down. Right? <laughs> down. Too agree. many calories. <laughs> you, are, you are going to lose. Yeah, Turkey or the other Pakistan or other countries reacting to these kind of things, they are losers because they will never win. For the others, just one person is enough to try them, crazy, disrupt their lives. Right. Yeah. It's way too much power. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. And um, then we came to uh, one, uh, the United States, uh, and I told John uh, there are two exceptions in uh, uh, freedom of expression, like First Amendment as a case. One is uh, in a crowded place, say fire, it right. is a proverbial example. By this way, you risk people's lives, you can create a stampede. And the other is fighting words. Right. Well, these are in the context of law. In there the are other contexts we could talk about. Okay, in, law, there are these yeah, things, yeah. in the context of law. And um, I told him about my anecdote, my uh, debate in the class. 1997 or 98 in law school, Arizona, Justice Rehnquist was the, the professor teaching Supreme Court, landmark Supreme Court cases. And when this came, and I was, uh, how many, I had been in the United States, I had been that time eight years. Okay. And still I was fresh, you know, okay. I had a lot still of suffering in Turkey. Yeah. And, prison because of two articles, four, six year prison, mm. and torture and stuff. Therefore, I am very sensitive regarding any limitation uh, to freedom of expression. But here it is, this is the justice of the Supreme Court, and I objected, I said, no. I said, if fighting words means that any word, uh, there are certain words or actions that can provoke other party very much, like burning cross is an example is given, then uh, it could be limited by government. And I said, well, this kind of uh, uh, justification, this kind of uh, uh, permission to the crowd or majority will really create a culture that if you get really upset to some ideas, and you will be able legally to censor or even make it illegal, correct? Therefore, it creates, it uh, Depends how, as we were saying, depends how the, the concept of fighting words is defined. Yeah, uh, and uh, yeah. I, I don't know, because I, I don't know the law on this stuff, so. Um, okay, Google. Fighting words exception of the First Amendment. Here's a summary from Legal Information Institute, Cornell University. Fighting words are, as first defined by the Supreme Court in Chaplinsky v. New Hampshire, 315 U.S. 568, words which by their very utterance inflict injury or tend to incite an immediate breach of the peace. Fighting words are a category of speech that is unprotected by the First Amendment. Yeah, it was 1942 case. 42. You get this Google, how easily finds it in seconds. It's unbelievable. No. And can't recognize my yeah. You <laughs> you hates this because it doesn't recognize her accent. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Here it is. This is the case, and uh, I think that such an exception is not a good idea because the majority that incite immediate breach of the peace. Well, uh, people become narrow-minded or psychopaths with time. Get angry. People get angry with some ideas. 
mm-hmm. and they can easily just justify this is self-fulfilling, correct? It, if it's if if the concept of fighting words can be defined as whatever makes somebody very angry, then just about subjective. anything could be a fighting exactly. word. Exactly, it is a very broad. I'd be surprised if that's how the law defines it, but I don't know the I don't know the case law or anything yeah. with respect to this. Yeah, I've I've always been interested more in the question. It, it is really it is narrow, but it is it will depend on the government. If the government, yeah, that's then a different problem. because the definition will be upon the judges and the government. If the government becomes very ideological and very yeah. hostile to other groups, they can easily say yes. You get right. people they are getting very upset yeah, the, when they say Black Lives Matter. Right. The white people think, "Wow, we are they are going to and kill attack. us." Right. 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 <laughs> they are. Right. They get angry. They create arson. They kill people. Therefore, right. you should right. not say shut them down. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. But interestingly, no, nobody's, uh, at least that I'm aware of, has made that challenge to something like Black Lives Matter. That no, I'll give you one example. But in principle, it could. Yeah, yeah. Right. therefore it right. is very open. Hey, uh, you were telling me about Miller. Mill. Mill, I say Miller. Yeah, Mill. John Mill. John Stuart Mill, John right. Stuart Mill. Um, yeah, well, I was saying, he, he's still, in his book on liberty from the mid-19th century, it was 1859, I think, was published, has the best sustained defense of freedom of speech yeah. uh, that I'm aware of. Uh, and he makes the distinction there between, well, between speech and action. Um, and he says very clearly, actions are by sort of definition going to have to be more limited. Like, I don't have a right to just punch you in the nose. Um, but, uh, so more limited than speech. But speech, there are kinds of speech that are, are also a problem. And he gives the he gives an example of what he calls a corn dealer, but he, he means say a big, a big owner, or what we would now say maybe a capitalist or something. So he says it's one thing um, to criticize the corn dealer in an article and say the corn the pri- private ownership of, of food is is theft is mm-hmm. immoral. Mm-hmm. If you want to say that in a in an article, you should be free to say that, and you people mm-hmm. should, and you should be able to say it and. People should be able to read it and think and so on. But to stand in front of a, an angry group of people mm-hmm. in front of the corn dealer's house and claim that I see, this, this is, is theft. Fight. This is where fight, uh, fighting words Well, come. this is where it could be, right? Yeah. This is an example of a kind of fighting words, right? Mm-hmm. So Mill was okay with that distinction because mm-hmm. there are certain things you can't do because or can't say because of the context and because they could create harm and damage of the, that kind. Violence, say, incite to violence. I actually have, um, I've been interested in this question on, a, well, in general as a kind of moral position, but um, also in terms of freedom of expression within universities uh, has interested me a lot. Yeah. Because there's been an attempt by um, certain people in a number of universities to, uh, to limit the kinds of speech and the, the kinds of uh, the kinds of speech that that is acceptable in a university or or limit the kinds of guests that could be invited political correctness this is kind of, right I, I don't like the expression but that's it yeah that's yeah. The kind of thing um, and uh, it seems to me that they they tend to get it wrong but it's not a it, it's not an all-black or all-white case here either because so what happens is very often uh, groups of students or staff or faculty it doesn't have to be just students might object, say, to somebody, to a, a very, in, in our case, in the American case, it's sort of very politically conservative who might be suspected of being a racist, for example, or something like that, um, a speaker, even an academic, somebody who's written books and whatnot. Um, they might object to this and say, we find this offensive. But it's, uh, it seems to me that finding something offensive is not sufficient grounds to censor it or to prevent it. On, on, for the simple reason that none of us have a right not to be offended. Mm-hmm. That's not a claim we can make against somebody else's action, mm-hmm. simply being offended. But at, so I, so I, I, I would, I mean, if I were still, I've been a dean and a provost and a rector of universities, if I was still in charge of a university, I would not accept that as a reason not to invite Professor X or writer Y. Yeah, to I think, uh, unfortunately, in this country there are certain things there's a lot of it. Oh, yeah. yeah At the same time, though, I, I do think we, we do have to be sensitive to the fact that 
for many people, students, faculty, staff, um, they, they still, they're, they're, traditionally, uh, uh, universities, and let's just say American universities, have been the province of white men, traditionally. That's been changing a lot in the last mm -hmm. 50 years. Mm -hmm. but, but traditionally, they've been the pro uh, province of white men. Uh, and it is still the fact, and we should acknowledge this, that there are many people, especially on, on the basis of race, mm -hmm. not so much gender anymore, but race, where people, um, people of color can often be made to feel like they don't belong. Yeah. So a racist speaker might make them feel that way or something like that. So that's something that we shouldn't just be breezily say, well, tough, you've got to live with it. Because I would also, and I've done this in print, argue for the following proposition, that when a university accepts a student into the community, the university's community, or hires a staff member, that by doing that, by virtue of that invitation, so to speak, um, that student or that that uh, member of staff has is is fully entitled is entitled to full membership in the community, and the university is under no obligation to invite speakers in who will challenge that entitlement mm -hmm. to membership in the university. Mm -hmm. So I, I do think that, I mean, there are, there are certain kinds of speakers who I think I, if I were still running a university, I would, I would not approve the invitation of, it, but on those grounds, not on the grounds of being offended. If, you know, we all get offended. People have, you know, people have been offending me my whole life. I'm yeah. a sort of lefty, <laughs> you know, and I, I've never belonged here. Yeah. So, but you got to get used to it. Uh, and the rest of us have to get used to it too, because we can be offended. Yeah, I, I think the rule should be for this, uh, I think if there is a group of students, let's like say a club, student club, uh, I don't know what is threshold for having a cl club, a club invite someone mm -hmm. and the, the university should not have a veto on that person if, because uh, no one is required to go uh, to that uh, meeting or right. to that lecture. Yeah. It's open, they come mm -hmm. and uh, they, they have uh, this university whoever have this idea. But if that person is uh, invited, uh, has, uh, will have controversial topic, and uh, therefore this kind of requirements should be put on every speaker. If you are coming to speak, lecture, they at least half of your time, let's say you are there two hours, one hour speech, one hour open question from the audience. Right. And uh, it's not written question that so that they can censor questions. Yeah. Inside, but raise your hand and question or objection. Two, three minutes for each person. This could be regulated. Right. And I think that way, because if they feel they have the opportunity to be heard, they have the opportunity to criticize the views, right. that's the best environment. I agree with all yeah. of that. Yeah. The, the problem, of course, one problem is that those who... It's becoming increasingly common in universities for people who, who disagree with uh, or, or, or are offended by or have strong disagreement with the speaker, not just to wait and raise a question, but to heckle the person and to try to prevent him or her from being able to speak even. That's wrong. And th that's wrong. But then the university has to take measures to prevent that. Absolutely. And that becomes a very controversial within... Uh, well, the students should be trained. Well, the, there should be class discuss this... Yeah and say why we do this right. and about the importance of freedom uh, principle, of expression right. for ideas. Because everybody, everybody tries to do that but it yeah. often doesn't work. Because if you don't deal with that and, and if you allow that to happen then effectively you're allowing what's called the heckler's veto. Absolutely. Which is not acceptable and you, in a university either. So. And, uh, uh, and it will be to others too. Everyone will heckle, start uh, right. making they, noises. And they do. And they're terrible. <laughs> it's terrible. a mess. Right. Yeah. What about uh, um, the other exception of speech is, of course, uh, we didn't mention it, is uh, uh, insult, uh, not insult, uh, libel, uh, false accusations. Uh, right. But this is a legal matter. Right? Yeah, the yeah. legal matter. And that is a good exception uh, because there is difference between insult right. and uh, false accusation, right. defamation. That's right. Because defamation is personal, specific, 
unbelievable. But insult is not a matter of all people will believe in that. They only know that you are very angry with that person. That's right. Just it's an expression of opinion, right? yeah, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Hostile opinion. Yeah. Right. And uh, as far as for actions, if speech, for example, promotes violence, but you are not acting violently, you say, my idea is this, that person should be punched in the face, for example. Right. Or some people do, like, uh, unfortunately, targeting the life of the person. In that regard, what do you think? Well, this is like Mill's example of calling the coin dealer a, yeah. a thief, you know, in front of a in front of his house with an angry I mob. See. So yeah. I, I would I would th this also it would be an example of of the kind of principle I was articulating that if th that that university is not obliged on free speech grounds to bring into campus a speaker who's going to say all the women here should be driven out and punched. The university has, because the women, by virtue of our inviting them into the university as part of the university community, have a full right to be there as much as mm -hmm. you or I. So we have no obligation on free speech grounds to allow a speaker in who's going to say that stuff. Yeah. Um, so I, I would think that, that that's the kind of case you're talking about. But there are other things that are going on in, at least in American universities these days, these days that are a little disconcerting. For example, there was a couple of years ago a, uni a university in... Um, um, it's some it's somewhere in the Midwest. Do you want some tea? No, I'm fine. Okay. I'm good. Uh, in the Midwest, somewhere <coughs> that cancel. They were planning to do a uh, a play of um, a Bertolt Brecht, Good Women of Sichuan, famous play. Brecht was great 20th century playwrights. And students, some students objected to the way it portrays. Um, uh, Asian people, and therefore the university canceled it. Interesting. Where the other case I've, I've written about some of this stuff, the, the other case that I find extraordinary is that um, in this was in the University of San Diego, I think mm -hmm. uh, there was a group of students who um, organized a petition to have uh, the court in the film studies program. There was a graduate course on the films of Woody Allen. And Woody Allen, of course, is, is a prominent, very influential, and great filmmaker, but he's also been criticized for years for sexual abuse and some other things. Uh, and there was a group of students um, put together a, a petition to have the course on Woody Allen removed from the curriculum. Mm -hmm. um, because... Um, the, the Inappropriate. Right. Well, the grounds were, this, this is a bad guy, and we're not going to have courses about bad guys. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Of course, I guess you can't teach about fascism mm -hmm. then either or anything else on this kind of argument. Fortunately, the faculty refused to accept this. The faculty turned it down, fortunately. But they're not always doing that, mm -hmm. you know. And so this, it's this, this um, impulse that increasingly students and others have that only the right idea Right. is allowed to be spoken, and I know what that is. Yeah. <laughs> this is a very dangerous part. Absolutely. Right. Now, what was the name of the article that you're referring, your article that... Uh, uh, I don't know, it was a, year, a while ago. Well, the, the more recent one, I don't remember. Okay. I had, I'll show it okay. to you. I said it. Right. Well, I put under the video. Uh -huh. Okay. And um, what else uh, about this subject of freedom? Uh, one I think is very important, I think, uh, which is not dealt with it, it is about um, big monopolies of marketplace of ideas, such as YouTube, that's, Facebook, yes, that Twitter, is a problem. Yeah, that's an interesting and problem. they are um, doing censorship, yeah, and they no, can't like get away with it very recklessly. Right. And uh, right. in the past it was town square, and right now town squares are controlled by these giant right. corporations. And therefore, I think there should be protection against them. And unfortunately, our constitution uh, is silent. It doesn't really protect uh, citizens from big corporations. We don't have Well, any. it does in some ways. But our law has not caught up to social media. Because yeah. social media is so new still that we yeah. haven't figured out uh, how yeah. to deal with it. But I agree with you. They, I, I've made this argument, too, for people. The last thing we want is Mark Zuckerberg deciding what we hear. Yeah. And what we can read. Yeah. This For example, awful. Twitter suspended me because of my criticism of the Turkish dictator. 
They say, really? Yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. No Suspended. kidding. Absolutely. And uh, therefore he had leverage over them, whatever, because he decides whether to ban the Twitter wow, or not. Wow. And they did it. I had about 147,000 followers and some very prominent followers I had. It means uh, right. I had very good network. Right, right, my right. influence was beyond 147,000. Right. Because some of my tweets would be published would be by, right, uh, uh, retweeted uh, and so retweeted on. That right, stuff. Right, right. And therefore they did it. Wow. And they didn't even provide me a reason, any reason specific. I objected each time there is kind of a way to appeal, right, to appeal right. and then not a single reason why they suspect. So no grounds? On which no grounds. Recklessly just... Uh, when was it? It was in April. April. Well, recently? Uh, yeah, in spring? But yeah. And I'm thinking to oh, fight lawsuit, but awful. the lawsuit is not possible. It's possible, but... It's not they possible. They haven't broken any law by... No, because it is a, they are not government. If it was government, I, I could right. be, have First Amendment, right? Right, right, right. right. And uh, right now I could go maybe based on contract, because they breached the contract without any cause. Well, they can have in the contract, we can, any time we can terminate. But I have an argument, I could say, well, initially when I started, I had zero followers. I had zero content. But with time, when I invested so much into the contact and right. having connections, many people came to Twitter because to follow me, to, to right. kind of right. have my tweet. And therefore, after a while, it's not the same contract because I have right now a uh -huh. lot of vested things. This, if I knew that they would do it uh, recklessly uh, right. when I do, I have seen this many content and followers, in the beginning, I wouldn't enter it, honestly. Yeah. I wouldn't spend that. But right. initially, so since I don't have that experience, right. I don't have that, I said, okay. Therefore, I think uh, th there might be a way of breach of contract I could uh, object. Yes. I'm thinking yeah, still yeah. I have time, maybe one year, until one year, mm -hmm. I could sue them. That's amazing. I didn't realize yeah. that. Yeah, it's terrible. I, I, yeah, I you, YouTube, and it's so arbitrary. YouTube is similar. YouTube did even worse. YouTube did worse to one of my uh, videos and uh, they deleted my video despite my objection they deleted they did not even respond they did not care and this guy a Turkish um, religious clergyman very famous Jubbeli Ahmed uh -huh. he has millions of followers even president Erdogan visits him he's uh -huh. such a and in one of his uh, sermons, he mentions me because I am crit uh, right. critical of uh, their uh, right. religion. Right. Right. He's a merchant, religious merchant. He's a dealer. Um, it's crazy. And uh, he's selling, car he cuts carton like this shape. Uh -huh. He says, this is exactly the shape of design of Prophet Muhammad's sandal. Carton, right. piece of paper. And then he sell, he sold it in Turkey. Imagine Turkey is uh, uh, people make about two three hundred dollars a no, monthly, right. and then forty five dollars in Turkish lira. How much right. money? Right, right, right. He's selling this. He's selling uh, uh, what is called a coffin, coffin that we prayed on it that we save you from the punishment of the grave. He's this kind of guy. And then in one of his speeches, he talks about me and my father. And my father is a great scholar. He was great and he was this high scholar. And then he makes up a lie in the name of my father that so, so far, my, uh, supposedly my father tells my younger brother's murderers, if you kill the older son also, I will forgive you. Supposedly the murderer go, my younger brother was killed by Turkish fascists. Oh really? Yeah, oh, he was two years younger than me. But long time ago, in 1979, when yeah. he was coming out from uh, mosques, Fatih uh -huh. mosques. He's a legend in Turkey, well known. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, he says the murderers went to his father, big scholar, and then they said, well, please forgive us. It's a lie, never happened. Uh, I know because my sisters, my right. brother, they live with right. right. Anyway, and then my father supposedly tells them, 
Well, you killed my younger son. If you uh, killed older one also, a deep, and then I will forgive you. Basically, by this way, he's indirectly repeating that fatwa right. against me, right. target me, right. and then I made a video responding to his uh, this video targeting me, and uh, I used some portion of his words and stuff, right. and then guess what? They complain to uh, YouTube for copyright infringement ah, could you use because I use the part that this guy makes up a lie regarding that that way against me, and then I say, goodness sake! It doesn't fall I'm under the fair myself, use. It's a life. fair use doctrine that yeah. allows you to use. Yeah, it is, it is more than fair use. It yeah. is not something unrelated. It is about my life. I'm defending my right. life. No. You say, well, this guy is fair. right for copy. <clears throat> It trumps it's more, important. <laughs> more important than your life. And this YouTube gets away with this. And I think there must be yeah, not some good. legal uh, right. protection. It's bad. Politi I mean, aside from all those, those are dreadful examples. If so you it's have uh, too, it's a politicians, friends, and uh, or um, in your um, city and stuff, please uh, let them know about this uh, trouble uh, regarding big corporations suppressing, censoring, and... Because um, now if I have this right, I mean, even Twitter, and I think Facebook is making noises about it, and Google maybe, they, they want to um, they want to censor what they call fake news. They, they don't want to be party to... You know, that's also dangerous. Which is okay, but who gets to decide what news is fake? Absolutely. This is and the problem. And tomorrow, right? the right <coughs> things will be... Censored as a fake news. Yes, late, and then you make are. Zuckerberg as the arbiter right. what exactly. is right, what is fake. Correct. Absolute trouble. Terrible. Let fake news decided by people. <clears throat> yes. If they are stupid enough to believe in that, and they so will suffer the consequences. Right. Exactly. They will learn. You cannot patronize people. Correct? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I am in agreement. With this you. seems so obvious to me. I can't understand yeah. how everybody, anybody, you know, will endorse this nonsense. Yeah. Yeah, the, that censorship, it, it pleases <coughs> us initially for short term, we may like but it, bad idea. but for long term it is horrible idea. Yeah. Okay, I want to stop here. Anything you want to say further about? No, we could be back. Area. This is just <coughs> introduction to That's right. freedom of speech. That's it, freedom of yeah. speech. We'll talk about brains and people sometime. Oh yeah, another <laughs> time. <laughs>